on this week's show, BMW showcases a very early prototype hydrogen fuel cell SUV, Kia invests in going wireless, and how Russians go to great lengths to get their hands on a Tesla Model S. These stories and more coming up next on 10. Enjoying today's show on YouTube and want to read the stories you're referring to today? Either click on the little information bar at the top of this video on selected stories or head to our website at www.transportevolve.com where you'll find the latest future car news as well as our buying guides, tech primers and of course our weekly show notes. It's Friday, July 10th, 2015. I'm Mickey Gordon Bloomfield and this week has been nothing but a blur. It's all a bit hazy to be honest. With its practical yet sporty i3 electric city car and sexy i8 plug-in hybrid sports coupe both selling strongly around the world, there's no mistaking the fact that BMW is super serious about the future of plug-in vehicles. Indeed, at some point in the not-too-distant future, it's expected that BMW will have a plug-in variant of pretty much every conventional car it sells, as well as an expanded i-brand lineup to include at least an i5 and i7 plug-in model. But at its annual Group Innovation Day at the Miramas Test Track in southern France this week, BMW showcased its work with hydrogen fuel cell vehicles for the first time, demonstrating an early prototype of a 5-series Gran Turismo hydrogen fuel cell vehicle, as well a three-year-old BMW i8-derived hydrogen fuel cell prototype sports car. At the event, BMW executives were careful to point out that the vehicles on display were a long way from production. Indeed, the i8-derived FCV prototype comes from the days before BMW's hydrogen fuel cell partnership with Toyota, while the 5 Series GT hydrogen fuel cell prototype uses the same fuel cell stack as the Toyota Mirai. While BMW didn't give a definite date, it did say the 5 Series GT was at least two generations away from production as a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle, so don't expect to be buying one at your local dealer anytime soon. In keeping with its promise from earlier this year to release quarterly sales figures a few days after the end of each quarter, Californian automaker Tesla Motors started the week by announcing an estimated 11,507 deliveries of its Model S electric sedan worldwide between April 1st and June 30th. That's equivalent to a 53% increase over the same quarter last year, or almost 1,500 cars more than it delivered during Q1 this year. In its official press release announcing the figure, which it doesn't break down into monthly totals, Tesla said that its official delivery figures for the quarter will be released at the end of July during its official Q2 earnings call. However, it said it expects the estimate given to be accurate to within about 1% of the actual cars delivered. The gradual increase does leave Tesla with about 33,463 vehicles left to deliver in the second half of this year, but given Tesla's aim to increase production of the Model S and to begin deliveries of its long-awaited Model X crossover SUV by the end of this year, we think it does have a chance of hitting its own predicted 55,000 vehicle target. We'll be watching carefully to see if it manages to hit that figure. This week, Nissan announced that it has now sold more than 10,000 Nissan Leaf electric cars in the UK, marking a significant milestone for the key market since sales began there in March 2011. Calculated from figures from the UK Society of Motor Manufacturing and Traders, or SMMT for short, Nissan says that the Leaf has enjoyed a 68.4% increase on sales during the first half of 2015, compared with the same period last year, totaling 2,964 sales. That places the Leaf ahead of the Tesla Model S, BMW i3, Renault Zoe and Volkswagen e-Golf electric cars, making it the most popular all-electric car in the UK. As for the most popular plug-in, that's still the Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid. In addition to celebrating 10,000 UK sales, Nissan told us last week at the ENV200 seven-seat Avalia minivan launch in Paris that Nissan electric vehicles around the world have now travelled more than 1 billion miles, a milestone that it says was passed sometime last month, about the same time as Tesla Model S cars passed that same figure. Given the fact that the Leaf is produced by a Japanese firm, however, and kilometers, not miles, are used as the principal unit of measurement, Nissan says the 1 billion miles milestone wasn't celebrated, but does promise we'll hear when the 2 billion kilometer mark is passed in another 400,000 kilometers or so. 
After years of extensive research and development into autonomous driving systems, software giant Google has just sent its own fully autonomous pod-like driverless electric cars onto the streets in and around its headquarters in Mountain View, California. But while those tiny pod-like cars are getting all the attention these days, some of Google's fleet of Lexus RX 450h hybrid SUVs also fitted with the same autonomous driving software as Google's low-speed, specially designed pods, are starting a new adventure of their own in Austin, Texas. As Google announced this week, Austin is the first city outside of California to help Google test its autonomous drive software and will soon be home to two fully autonomous Lexus RX 450h hybrid prototypes. Aside from being known for its techy, geeky subculture, Austin's high-speed Google Fiber network connection combined with the actual layout of its streets make it the ideal testbed for Google's autonomous vehicle program. So we'll be keeping a close eye on this one to see how the two cars fare so far from home. As part of its continuing nationwide rollout of free electric car charging provision for owners of its Leaf electric car, Nissan North America has officially added the city of Boston, Massachusetts to its list of key market areas where Leaf customers can charge their cars for free. Called the No Charge to Charge program, Nissan's scheme offers Leaf customers free complimentary charging at participating Level 2 and Chadamo DC quick charge stations for two years from point of purchase, making the Leaf even cheaper to own and operate. The announcement made this week places Boston as the 17th key market area to welcome Nissan's No Charge to Charge program since it launched last year, and combined with the Commonwealth's generous $2,500 vehicle rebate program should make the Leaf irresistible to those who have yet to commit to life with an electric car. But I also can't pass up a story about Leafs in Boston without adding the honourable mention to fictitious Fringe Division officer Olivia Dunham, who happened to overcome both range anxiety and FBI stereotypes to drive a Leaf around Boston in Series 4 of the fun sci-fi show from Fox. I wonder if she'll be eligible for Nissan's new scheme. Back to BMW and its group Innovation Day for this one, because alongside the hydrogen fuel cell prototypes we told you about earlier on in the show, BMW unveiled a 2 Series Active Tourer plug-in hybrid concept vehicle at the very same group Innovation Day earlier this week. Based on the European market front-wheel drive 2 Series, the 2 Series Active Tourer plug-in hybrid concept vehicle features the same through-the-road plug-in hybrid system as the i8 sports car, which translates to a 1.5-litre three-cylinder gasoline engine up the front driving the front wheels and a powerful electric motor driving the rear wheels for all-wheel drive capabilities. Unlike the i3 electric car, however, this particular prototype offers a fairly disappointing 23 miles per charge, but it's worth noting that this model would fit into the mainstream BMW market to give existing BMW fans a car that's more environmentally friendly than any of its current engine choices, rather than an out-and-out -out EV fan car. It, like the hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, is just a prototype, but is far closer to market than the H2 cars from earlier. It also happens to be built on the same UKL platform as BMW's highly popular Mini brand, meaning this could be a hint that BMW's promised Mini plug-in hybrid could offer in terms of range and fuel economy. So watch this space. If we're honest, we've always viewed the Kia Soul EV as little more than a compliance car, partly due to its limited market availability and the fact it's a conversion of an existing gasoline model. Despite the fact that it's the longest range electric car you can buy today without going full hog and slapping down some serious cash for a Tesla Model S. Anyway, this week Kia stepped up to the plate, announcing its intention to help expand DC quick charging infrastructure in the Pacific Northwest, ahead of the market debut there of the Soul EV in Washington State and Oregon later this year. Admittedly, the 10 new DC quick charging stations will add across the two states will be out of a 10 of 20 total dealerships certified to sell the Soul EV, but it's still a positive start. As for the motivation, Kia says that the positive sales in California means it's decided to expand availability to California's northern neighbours, which is great news if you happen to live in those evening loving cities of Portland, Oregon or Seattle, Washington. But wait, there's more! On the same day, Kia announced a new partnership between itself and Moho Mobility Inc, funded by the USDOE, to research and develop a way to rapid charge electric car battery packs wirelessly using inductive charging. The details are a bit sketchy right now, but in the end, the goal is clear. Charge a car without wires. We're going to be interesting to see how that one works out. 
and finally with the tesla model s electric sedan now available in more than 19 different countries around the world and deliveries from the californian automaker slowly ticking up month by month more of the world than ever before can buy the electric car of their dreams easily and quickly at a fairly local tesla store but as bloomberg explained this week there's one country in the world where getting a tesla model s is particularly difficult the Russian Federation, where Tesla fans are going to seriously crazy lengths to get them some Tesla action. One software manager, for example, flew to the US to buy his Tesla Model S, then dropped $12,000 on flying it home and an eye-watering $55,000 on officially importing it as a grey market car. And he's not alone either. With several hundred Model S cars now unofficially in the Russian Federation, Muscovites are begging Elon Musk to officially start selling the luxury high-end car to the country. But thanks to ties with SpaceX and consequentially the Pentagon, that's unlikely to happen anytime soon. Which is maybe the best considering the nearest service centre to Moscow is 500 miles away in Finland. Well, that's me done. I'll be under a rock, gently rocking backwards and forwards until Monday, recovering from the week, which, as those who follow me on Twitter will know, wasn't all that. Anyway, we'll be back next week at the usual time for another show. But in the meantime, you can find all the other news that's fit to print on our website at www.transportevolve.com. Chat to us on the Twitters at Transport Evolve or head to our YouTube channel to catch up with our latest shows. As always, there's a lot we haven't managed to fit into today's show, including how Formula E and its all 10 teams are heading to the Forza 6 on the Xbox One, a new semi-solid battery which is making big waves in the investor world, and I sit in the back of the Nissan ENV200. No, seriously, it was very comfortable. So when we're done, be sure to head to our site to read them all. Thanks for watching. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Have a great weekend, and until next time, keep evolving.